Today we visit with Glenda Miller at her own studio near Tipton, Missouri. I'm Rick Jay, your host, and this is Mid-Missouri Art News. <laughs> Welcome back to Mid-Missouri Art News uh, with Glenda Miller here, uh, just south of uh, Tipton, Missouri. Glenda's was with us back in the uh, year 2017, and she's uh, actually JCTV Access Mid-Missouri Art News number seven, if you want to take a look at that. So, if you will, uh, join me in welcoming Glenda Miller. Hi, Glenda. Well, Glenda, it's been a while, so we would like to ask you to bring us up to date, um, our viewers, especially our new viewers, uh, and share with them how you became inspired to be become an artist and to get involved in so many different uh, techniques and, and crafts, if you would like to call them that. Go ahead. Um, as I mentioned in the last uh, segment, um, I was drawing and uh, creating paper dolls and, and stuff like that when I was very young and all through high school and all through school uh, I was always uh, got good grades in in the art classes and um, in high school I wanted to be a commercial artist but there just weren't the funds um, to go to art school and uh, so I became a draftsman for probably 13 years. And then I got it, um, also got into photography over the years as my uh, artistic outlet. We took uh, photography classes together at State Fair uh, Community College. Um, and then when I retired, I went back and took more art classes uh, at community college. I took watercolor classes, oil painting, uh, ceramics, um, and I, I love them all. Uh, and then uh, I got into some quilting and I started trying to, trying to uh, uh, do put more of my artwork in my quilting so I started thinking more about creating my own fabric and um, so I've gotten into uh, dyeing some pieces and um, doing some uh, stamping and painting on fa uh, fabric and you're going to share that with us as a demonstration um, in the second segment to, yes, today. I yes, will, I will show you how to dye a small piece of fabric and, and the, very simple. Oh, excellent. Anybody. So don't be atten intimidated by the thought of dyeing fabric today. Right. Right. Uh, Glenda is going to share that with you in the second segment. So we want everyone to uh, stay with us throughout the program. Uh, well, Glenda, you are a very busy lady representing uh, uh, different art associations, what have you. Uh, what are some of the past events that you are excited about to share with our viewers that you've been involved in since uh, uh, the year 2017? Um, well, I've taken a class at the uh, Houston Quilt Show. It's an international show uh, in Houston, Texas. And... Uh, I took a class from Judy Perez, who uh, showed me a lot of techniques for dyeing fabric. 
And that is one of the techniques that I'm going to demonstrate today. A real, very simple, uh, anybody can do it. Right. Now, you shared with me earlier that she has a booklet that yes. uh, on um, online that you... Uh, can encourage people to look. Oh, good. Let me get a tight shot of that. That's create kit creativity. Yeah, it's a an alchemy. Creative alchemy by Judy Perez. Excellent, excellent. Well, great. We'll look forward to that uh, uh, second segment after the break here in a few moments. Well, now there are there any acknowledgments these uh, this past uh, uh, three years that you've been involved with. I understand that there's a Liberty a Liberty Project. Uh, what's that all about? Oh, um, Linda Hoover, the president of uh, Sedalia Visual Art Association, and I um, assisted her in painting a mural at the uh, Liberty Park in Sedalia, Missouri. It's located next to the swimming pool, and um, it's on the back side of a um, handball court. Well, uh, Glenda, we must take a break. We're going to come right back uh, with a demonstration and her learned technique of dyeing fabric. So stay with us. We'll be right back. There's so much more here on Mid-Missouri Art News. Welcome back to Mid-Missouri Art News, coming to you from the studio of Glenda Miller near Tipton, Missouri. Well, the demo, Dying Fabric, is about to happen. Glenda is going to take her time to give you the scoop on how to dye fabric. And I imagine that a lot of you uh, are intimidated by the, even the thought, but Glenda is going to make it easy for you. So I just got to hand it over to you, Glenda. Take it from there. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a piece of fabric. Now this uh, is not ordinary fabric that you get at the fabric store. This has to be um, ready for dyeing. It doesn't have any sizing or anything in it. It's ready for dyeing. And uh, I will take this piece and get it wet. Get most of the water out of it. And I can spread it out. I usually have um, pieces, layers of, of plastic so that I can then, when I'm finished, I can lift my piece off and take it to another table to dry it out. Um, this piece, um, I'm going to start with some, uh, the colors that I'm using are called Golden High Flow Acrylics. And then I have also what's called uh, GAC 900 by Golden. This is a, it's an acrylic medium that modifies the paints for a softer hand 
and increased launderability on wearable fabrics. Um, this this is important to have when for dyeing on uh, the fabric. And I'm going to take some of my colors and put them here in my palette as soon as I open them up. I'm going to use a little bit of blue. This is uh, ultramarine blue and I have Quinta Acetone Red that I'm going to put in my little pan here. And I need to add some of the GAC. If I open it up. There. Then I want get my brush here and I want to pick up mix this up a little bit in the gag in and then all I have to do is start painting on my fabric here and what I'm going to do here with this blue and red is I'm going to uh, Kind of let them overlap so that it makes kind of a purple streak in the middle. The more water that you put in, mix in with these um, paints, the uh, lighter the color. Then once I have my fabric all colored, covered, I'll take it and scrunch it up like this. Then I'll take it, clean my hands off, take it over to another table to dry it. And when I'm finished, when it's dried, it will set on that table um, at least overnight. And when it's dried, you'll iron it out and it will look something like this or this. But the um, interesting thing that happens when you scrunch it up, the uh, low pace places is where the dye is darker. The, the lighter places are where the uh, fabric was the higher points. The, uh, the dye will actually go to the low points. So you can see I didn't have these scrunched up a whole lot. And sometimes you'll have one side will look better than the other side. You'll be you'll be surprised that sometimes um, 
the back side might turn out better. And then sometimes you could use this fabric by itself or I can print on it and I'll use um, stamps that I've made out of foam and then a piece of plastic that I've, I've this is the foam is has an adhesive back and I can um, draw and cut out an, a piece and uh, then I can paint on it and then stamp it on the fabric and and then what happens is I come up with pieces like this was stamped with this little stamp. This was painted background and then I stamped it. Um, and I I ha also can use blocks that we would uh, you would have to use like a uh, a brayer and apply the ink to the block and then uh, press it onto your fabric. And this is a commercial stamp that I just bought and uh, used. It makes a nice little flower. Uh, um, these are blocks that I have made out of, uh, it's a rubber type of material, very, very easy to cut on, and then, um, these are blocks that you can make a repeating pattern, like you can end up with a whole piece of fabric using this one block and you have the uh, that you have a uh, you can see that these flowers in the these petals in the corner of this block made these uh, it was laid down like this and you repeat it so it makes uh, a dual design. Well Glenda, that was a, a great demonstration uh, and uh, we, we thank you so much for that. Linda, that was a great demonstration, and uh, I know that a lot of people are somewhat yeah. intimidated about thinking about dyeing and making their block prints, yeah. whatever. So that's it's really informational and educational for us. Well, you know, you uh, 
probably could teach someone here in your beautiful studio. So do you uh, teach classes occasionally? Or would you like to share that um, with people? I haven't, but I could. Um, I could. If, if someone was interested, they could contact me um, at my email address, millerscaveart at gmail.com. Excellent, excellent. So now you, you know how to get a hold of her to answer your questions, or maybe she'll spend some time with you if you uh, would like. Well, Glenda, would you have any, along that note, if someone's intimidated, they want to try this, have you any words of inspiration that you would like to share with um, us viewers? Well, um, it's, it's not difficult. Um, there are still other procedures, um, and they were in that book that I showed you earlier by, um, <laughs> by, by Judy Perez. Um, uh, she gives a great demonstration, and, and the, the different patterns, different techniques um, are, are infinite. Um, you can come up with your own, but she has quite a few of them in that uh, book. And that's online, purchased uh, online. Right. Okay, well, very good. Um, well, again, thanks for being my guest, uh, Miss Miller, and uh, sure appreciate to have you back the second time uh, here at JCTV Mid-Missouri Art News. Thank you. You're, you're sure welcome. Well, my thanks goes out to our producer, Gloria Enlow, at JCTV and her crew. And thank you viewers for watching worldwide now. And uh, so that's, uh, I hope we can bring you some quality, continue to bring you quality uh, uh, shows here on uh, Mid-Missouri Art. And it's also Spotlight on the Arts. Um, so st keep it tuned, shall we say, and uh, look for more right here at JCTV Access Mid-Missouri Art News, and also Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Rick J. saying, see you next time.